The Weather Experts, only on ABC 13. Tonight on Nightline, Fight Night. We're live at Ole Miss, and the verdict is in on a historic night in presidential politics. Money matters. The economic mess intrudes as John McCain and Barack Obama trade punches and throw some sharp elbows. And the winner is George Stephanopoulos is here with the Nightline report card to declare who won and who lost. From the global resources of ABC News with Cynthia McFadden and Martin Bashir in New York City and Terry Moran from the site of the first presidential debate in Oxford, Mississippi, this is Nightline, September 26, 2008. Good evening, everyone. I'm Terry Moran. Call it the battle at Ole Miss. As they take down the stage here behind me, there's a historic debate on this historic campus tonight. John McCain and Barack Obama went at it for more than 90 minutes before a hall here full of VIPs and a few students and a huge television audience. Estimates going into tonight ran as high as perhaps 60 million, maybe 70 million people. And what they all saw was a high-stakes confrontation on foreign policy, a debate that almost didn't happen, of course. The drama here began before they took this stage. Would McCain show up after pledging he would stay in Washington until a deal was done on the Wall Street bailout? Would Obama pass that commander-in-chief test? Well, in the end, they both brought their A-games. It Except was the right moment now, that almost didn't happen. Senators Obama and McCain. There they were, Barack Obama and, yes, John McCain, who for a couple of days threw this historic debate into doubt, calling for a delay until Congress passed the Wall Street bailout bill. Let me begin with... Well, this was supposed to be a debate about foreign policy, but right off the bat, moderator Jim Lehrer brought up the elephant in the room, the financial crisis. Where do you stand? on the financial recovery plan. Obama took the question and ran with it as an opportunity to blast Republican economic policies and tie them to John McCain. This is a final verdict on eight years of failed economic policies promoted by George Bush, supported by Senator McCain. Uh, a theory that basically says that we can shred regulations and consumer protections and give more and more to the most and somehow prosperity will trickle down. Uh, it hasn't worked. McCain sounded a populist note, casting himself as the man who can tame the wild excesses of the economy and fix broken institutions. But somehow in Washington today, and I'm afraid on Wall Street, greed is rewarded, excess is rewarded, and corruption, or certainly failure to carry out our responsibility, is rewarded. As President of the United States, people are going to be held accountable. And then McCain turned on Obama, the first attack of the night, accusing him of being part of the problem of out-of-control earmark spending. He has asked for $932 million of earmarked pork barrel spending, nearly a million dollars for every day that he's been in the United States Senate. But Obama stayed on the offensive once again, painting McCain as the inheritor and the champion of George W. Bush's economic policies. But the fact is that Eliminating earmarks alone is not a recipe for how we're going to get the middle class back on track. And when you look at your tax policies that are directed primarily at those who are doing well, and you are neglecting people who are really struggling right now, I think that is a continuation of the last eight years, and we can't afford another four. The candidate's body language offered a sharp contrast. Obama, loose, cool, using his hands like a conductor, shaping his answers. McCain, crisp. Punchy leaning forward and chopping the air to drive home his points. And then the first big surprise, McCain suggested that the way to pay for the Wall Street bailout was a spending freeze. Well, how about a spending freeze on uh, everything but defense, veteran affairs, and entitlement programs? Spending freeze? I think we ought to seriously consider, with the exceptions of caring for our veterans, national defense, and several other vital issues. The problem with a spending freeze is you're using a hatchet uh, where you need a scalpel. To acknowledge. Obama, once that again, and with what seemed this time like real enthusiasm, tied McCain to Bush. The country as uh, John, it's been your president, who you said you agreed with 90% of the time, who presided over this increase in spending, this orgy of spending, and enormous deficits. The American people know me very well, right. and that is independent 
and a maverick of the Senate. And as they warmed up, some disdain started creeping into McCain's voice, as if he not just opposes Obama, but holds him in contempt. Senator Obama doesn't seem to understand that if without precondition you sit down across the table from someone who has called Israel a stinking corpse, and, and throughout this debate, again and again, map. McCain called Obama naive, inexperienced, dangerously unready to be president. This is dangerous. It isn't just naive. It's For his dangerous. part, Obama just so kept casting McCain as part of the problem, a man of too deeply tied to the Bush policies of the past to represent change. And you voted for almost all of his budgets. So to, to stand here yeah. after eight years and say that you're going to lead on controlling spending and you know, balancing our tax cuts so that they help middle class families when over the last eight years that hasn't happened, I think uh, just uh, is you know, uh, kind of hard to swallow. Foreign policy came in with the big question. What are the lessons of the war in Iraq? McCain blasted Obama for opposing the troop surge. Senator Obama said the surge could not work, said it would increase sectarian violence, said it was doomed to failure. Recently on a television program, he said it exceeded our wildest expectations. But yet, after conceding that, he still says that he would oppose the surge if he had to decide that again today. But Obama did not back down. He unloaded on McCain, casting his support for the war as a disastrous failure and, of leadership. And at the time when the war started, you said it was going to be quick and easy. You said we knew where the weapons of mass destruction were. You were wrong. You said that we were going to be greeted as liberators. You were wrong. You said that it, uh, there was no history of violence between Shia and Sunni. And you were wrong. Next, Afghanistan and Pakistan. And McCain mocked Obama's declaration that he, as president, would attack al Qaeda targets in Pakistan. Now, you don't do that. You don't say that out loud. Obama counterpunched, things, reminding voters of this light but controversial moment of McCain. In that old uh, that old Beach Boy song, Bomberan. You know, <laughs> bomb, bomb, bomb. bomb. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Coming from you, who, you know, in the past have threatened extinction for North Korea and, you know, sung songs about bombing Iran, I don't know, you know, how credible. On Iran, it was Obama who brought up his own controversial idea, negotiate directly with the government in Tehran. This notion that by not talking to people, we are punishing them has not worked. It has not worked in Iran. It has not worked in North Korea. In each instance, our efforts at isolation have actually accelerated their efforts to get nuclear weapons. That will change when I'm president of the United States. McCain ridiculed Obama. You sit down across the table from someone who has called Israel a stinking corpse and wants to destroy that country and wipe it off the map. You legitimize those comments. This is dangerous. At the end of what was really a serious and substantive debate on foreign policy, it all came back to Iraq. Senator Obama still doesn't quite understand or doesn't get it that if we fail in Iraq, it encourages Al Qaeda. Over the last eight years, this administration, along with Senator McCain, uh, have been solely focused on Iraq. That has been their priority. That has been where all our resources have gone. In the meantime, bin Laden is still out there. And then, as the debate wound down, John McCain boiled down his argument with a solid shot at Obama. I honestly don't believe that Senator Obama has the knowledge or experience and has made the wrong judgments in a number of areas. So, as the stage comes down pretty quickly behind me here, the lines are now drawn. Time is running out. Two more debates to go, plus the showdown next week between Sarah Palin and Joe Biden. And when we come back, George Stephanopoulos joins us live for the Nightline Report Card. Want to steal a cookie from our cookie jar? Hey! When it's a tasty cookie that's actually good for you, hey, hey! why not? Cookie from our cookie jar at Kashi.com. We won't look. Free cookie at Kashi.com. Kashi. .com. Kashi.
Takashi. Seven whole grains on a mission. I've been looking over your green proposal. Great. It's fine, just fine. I'm sure it'll make people feel real good about the company. You should go over big with the tree huggers, too. See, the folks that I report to, they don't eat granola. So let me ask you, why would I sign this? This plan could cut our energy costs by 40%. 40%. And we spent $18 million on energy last year. Put it on. Just sign it. Spruce up for fall with Ace. Now through Monday, get Ace Green Turf Lawn Winterizer or Fertilizer on sale for $10.99 and get an extra $3 mail-in rebate. Or Ace Royal Paint starting at $19.99, now with an extra $5 mail-in rebate. Ace, the helpful place. It's a lovely day. What are you going to miss when you have an allergy attack? <laughs> Benadryl is more effective than the leading allergy medicine at relieving your worst symptoms and works when you need it most. Benadryl, you can't pause life. ABC's Dirty Sexy Money premieres Wednesday, 10, 9 central on ABC. This Sunday, the Extreme Team season of Real Heroes begins with our biggest family ever. The two-hour season premiere of ABC's Extreme Makeover Home Edition, Sunday, 7, 6 central on ABC. Met Tom Perriello yet? A New York lawyer who's moved back to Virginia to run for Congress. But his liberal policies are still from New York. Perriello opposes the offshore and Alaskan drilling we need to lower gas prices, opposes the Marriage Protection Amendment, which protects traditional marriage, and Perriello supports the so-called comprehensive immigration reform. We know what that means, amnesty and open borders for illegal immigrants. Tom Perriello, wrong for Virginia. I'm Virgil Coot, and I approve this saying. There are just 39 days until Election Day, and the first presidential debate is now in the books. So who scored on which issues? Who won? Our chief Washington correspondent, George Wa Stephanopoulos, joins us to grade tonight's action in the Nightline Report Card. Hey, Terry. All right, George, let's... How are you doing tonight? Good, thank you. Let's start with their approaches, the approach that each candidate took strategy. What are the grades? Barack Obama, A minus, John McCain, B plus. Each of them had an offensive and a defensive strategy tonight, Terry. And let's take Obama first. Uh, on, on, on offense, he had to try to tie John McCain to George Bush. And I thought he did that relatively effectively on the, on the economy, particularly at the beginning. But even better was overcoming the bar on Commander-in-Chief. He comes in at a significant disadvantage on Commander-in-Chief. People wonder whether he has the experience. Uh, to be president, to handle national security. And I think on answer after answer after answer, he showed confidence, he showed toughness, and he showed he belonged on that stage. For John McCain, um, he also had two goals. On one, he had to try to uh, tarnish uh, Barack Obama on the issue of, and question his experience, question his judgment. He used the words often. How many times did he say uh, Barack Obama doesn't understand? I think where he, he did a, didn't do enough, even though he did a good job at showing how he was different from President Bush in the past, I don't think John McCain did enough going forward to show how he would take the country in a different direction. That's why I think Barack Obama gets the edge here. A minus for Obama, B plus for McCain. Okay, how about the intangibles? That's the substance. How about the style? What are the grades there? Again, Barack Obama, A minus, John McCain, uh, B plus. Let's take McCain first. He did do a good job. As you pointed out in your piece, he was crisp, he was declarative. I also thought he did a very good job um, at, at bringing out emotion over the course uh, of the debate mm -hmm. and telling stories, weaving, weaving that in. But, and I want to show some of this here. Uh, John McCain tended not to look either at his opponent Barack Obama or at the camera. He tended to address Jim Lehrer so he wasn't looking at the, at the camera. Look at Barack Obama. He looked straight at the camera. He also was willing to engage John McCain again and again and again. And I think that he got the advantage uh, there. So an A minus uh, for Barack Obama, B plus for McCain. And just to follow up on that, George, quickly, that, that visual contrast that's up there, that's historic, really, black, white, an older man, uh, Barack Obama, 47. Oh, what do you make of that? Barack Obama a little taller, John McCain a little shorter. Generally, the taller candidate wins uh, for president. But there was something else going on here, and I'm not sure if it was our monitor. And I, I, I can't wait to see what people at home thought about this. It did appear uh, that John McCain at times was looking a little more washed out uh, than, than you might expect. And Barack Obama 
and, and maybe I was wrong here, but we were talking about it up here on the set. Sometimes it seemed like the lighting on him was, was even darker uh, than he appears in person. And I'm, I'm wondering if people saw that at home as well. The perils of the makeup uh, artist, as, as you know, as we both know there, George. How about accuracy? A lot of claims out there. What are the grades? So there? many, and it's hard to sort through them all. But let's look at the grades for uh, Barack Obama, B minus, uh, John McCain, a B. Again, they were both within the range of, of, for, for politicians. I think uh, Br McCain had a, a trivial error when he told the story about Eisenhower's letters. He didn't actually say he would resign, write a letter that would of resignation before D-Day. He also said that Barack Obama would have the government take over health care. That's not... Uh, the Obama plan, but I think on the on the points where there was more engagement, I think uh, Barack Obama had a little more trouble. He said that Admiral Mullen did not say that his uh, timeline was dangerous. Admiral Mullen, in fact, did say that they had a big dispute over whether Henry Kissinger wanted direct talks with Iran. He does want direct talks with Iran, but not at the presidential level, at the level of Secretary of State. So I give a, a, a little bit of an edge here because more of the time was spent on areas where Barack Obama uh, was was a little less accurate than John McCain. And overall, right, I think bottom the, line. bottom line, the winner is, uh, uh, is Barack Obama. He comes into this race where the country wants change. His number one goal was to show that he belonged on that stage, that he was a credible commander in chief, that he could uh, hold his own on national security. He did that tonight. He gets the win. All right. George Stephanopoulos declaring Barack Obama the winner. I might have gone a little bit the other way. I'm not sure. Anyway, you can see John McCain will be George's guest Sunday on This Week. Thanks very much to George for that. And you can weigh in with who you think won tonight's debate. Click on the Nightline page at abcnews.com. And when we come back, uh, they're breaking down the stage. We'll break down the post-debate spin. billion movies delivered so far and never a late fee pop some corn it's movie time netflix spruce up for fall with ace now through monday get ace green turf lawn winterizer or fertilizer on sale for 10.99 and get an extra three dollar mail-in rebate or ace royal paint starting at 19.99 now with an extra five dollar mail-in rebate ace the helpful place you can buff up clean up but you can't cover up that bald spot instead of hiding it solve it with men's rogaine foam in clinical testing 85 percent of men regrew hair men's rogaine foam use it or lose it after they faced off in their first debate john mccain faces george this sunday morning don't miss john mccain's first interview after the debate only on abc's this week with george stephanopoulos this sunday morning it's sure to be news making during Rick Whitson Honda Summer Clearance, you can always expect great deals on some of the most reliable, fuel-efficient vehicles in America. And we usually give you all the details, like financing as low as 0.9% on selected models and great lease rates. But during our 08 Summer Clearance Extension, the savings are so amazing that it's impossible to tell you everything in just 30 seconds. So the only way to discover all the incredible deals is to come by Rick Whitson Honda. But hurry, it all ends September 30th. One brand, one family, one philosophy, and one more amazing opportunity to save. Only at Rick Whitson Honda, Peters Creek Road, Roanoke. For eight years, we've been told that the way to a stronger economy was to give huge tax breaks to corporations and the wealthiest, cut oversight on Wall Street, and somehow all Americans would benefit. Well, now we know the truth. Instead of prosperity trickling down, pain has trickled up. We need to change direction. Now. I'm Barack Obama, and here's what I'll do as president. End the Wall Street free-for-all with common-sense safeguards that put homeowners and struggling families first not corporate greed and CEO bonuses. Jumpstart our economy with a middle class tax cut paid for by closing special interest loopholes. And get serious about energy independence, a 10 year mission to create millions of good paying jobs by investing in made in America energy and infrastructure. You can read my whole plan to rebuild our economy on our website, BarackObama.com. It's time to get our economy back on track and put the middle class first again. And that's why I approve this message. Sooner or later, 
nature will show you its unpredictable side. But with features like vehicle stability assist, anti-lock brakes, and available real-time four-wheel drive, the CRV was made for just such situations. Something new to crave, the CRV. Build and price your all-weather CRV at shophonda.com. Nightline continues from the site of the first presidential debate with Terry Moran. Well, let's break it down now. We turn now to ABC News consultants Donna Brazil and Matthew Dowd for their reaction to the candidate's performance in the post-debate spin. And let me ask you both, what are people going to be talking about tomorrow about this debate? What, what sticks with you? Matt, let me begin with you. Well, I think when you look at this, this interesting about this race is that Barack Obama came in with momentum. And having been through these debates in 2004 and 2000, the person behind has to change that momentum. George Bush did it against Al Gore in the first debate. John well, Kerry did it against George and Bush in the first debate in Miami in 2004. And I think what happened tonight, not a lot of minds were changed, but I think the race is getting frozen with a Barack Obama short lead. I think that's what's beginning to happen, and I think that's what the debate did tonight. I, I thought... Uh, what was memorable for you? I thought, well, first of all, John McCain needed a game changer. He needed to, to really, this was his turf, foreign policy. He needed to knock it out of the box, and yet... Uh, it was Barack Obama who seemed uh, confident and comfortable with uh, the challenges facing uh, the next president. It was Obama who really at times took the fight to John McCain, linking John McCain to George Bush. And you saw at times John McCain becoming quite uncomfortable and trying to basically distinguish himself as a maverick again. So I think tomorrow uh, people will be talking about uh, Barack Obama, that he closed the stature gap, or some people call it the what-if gap, and he came across as presidential and knowledgeable about the issues, and he didn't let John McCain, you know, uh, put him on a de defense on foreign policy. Hmm. Well, let me, let me pick up on something in there, Donna, that the thread, that the change factor, the country's clamoring for change. Uh, how did that play in how each of them approached the issues, do you think? Well, as you recall, at the Republican debate, uh, John McCain decided to change his narrative from experience to change. Well, tonight he flipped back to experience and uh, tried to basically say, well, Senator Obama, you don't, you don't know, you don't understand. And he rattled off names and talked about all of the places he's been. I guess he has a passport that's been stamped several times, unlike his vice presidential uh, uh, pick. But the, this was a debate about the future. And Barack Obama clearly in Iraq and talking about Iran, he understood the challenges facing the country. And it, it, you saw at the end when he talked about China and, and the fact that we're borrowing from China, uh, people got a sense that he knew how to tie these, these issues together, the, the, the economic crisis and yet foreign policy being a, a, a clearly essential for the next president to, to understand the challenges we face and the threats. Matt? Uh, well, you know, I think it's interesting. I think for, uh, John McCain did make a switch in strategy tonight. It, for a long time, he'd operate on the ready versus not ready, threw that out, as Donna says, and now he went back. And to me, what I got out of this debate is John McCain was trying to prove a long past that he had. He brought up letters to, to, from Dwight Eisenhower. He brought up very other instances of him serving in the Senate. He was trying to demonstrate you can trust at a time of anxiety, go with what you know, go with what the, go with what the secure past, and this guy is dangerous. And Barack Obama basically said, listen, I got a plan, we need to change the direction, I got a future. And I think that was the stark contrast that the country has to decide. Do I want the experienced politician who has a past, or do I want the new sort of charismatic leader that has a, that has, wants to look towards the future? And that's where I think, and if you're a betting person on a race like this, in a, in a presidential race, usually the one that wins is the one that has that looks towards the future. Hmm. So those are the battle lines. Our thanks to Donna and Matt to that, for that. We'll see you next week, of course, in St. Louis for the vice presidential debate. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the report from the spin room. ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Dan Active.
Back to school. Here we go again. In addition to my job, I'm back to being a drill sergeant, a chauffeur, a personal shopper, a... Back to school stress can weaken your body's defenses. So drink Dan Active. Only Dan Active has LKCI Immunitas cultures and is clinically proven to help strengthen your body's defenses. So I can do the job I like best, be a mom. Get ready for back to school now. Mr. President, what place do you think you have in history? In history? I mean, history will all be dead. <laughs> you may find yourself in a beautiful hell. Fiasco. You may ask yourself, how did I get here? Ruin Bush me. Get out of my life! Has he been imbibing something I don't know about? He's a devil. Oh! Enhanced interrogation techniques. You like pulling out their toenails? <laughs> Josh Brolin is WBBG 13 in theaters October 17th. Sunday at 9, 8 central. It's the juiciest five years in the making. Season premiere. Come on, zippy zippy. <sighs> ABC's Desperate Housewives. The season premiere Sunday, 9, 8 central on ABC. It's Jeffrey's birthday and we're having a two-day sale blowout. Save big with huge doorbuster deals late Friday and early Saturday. Plus, up to 50% off the toys every kid wants. Toys R Us, where kids are a big deal. Is there anything better than paying half price for great food and amazing merchandise? Get to WSCT.com for gift cards at great places, all at half price. Don't be late. Quantities are limited. Buy it for half at WSCT.com. Spin it how you like. Nobody beats a Blackwell Kia deal. Nobody. Like the Kia Optima, just twelve four ninety five plus two thousand cash or trade with Kia's ten year one hundred thousand mile warranty. Nobody beats this Blackwell deal. Toyota is the most fuel efficient full line car company, and model year end closeout deals mean now is the best time to get great deals on remaining inventory. Get up to forty five hundred cash back from Toyota on Tundras or zero percent APR financing for five years. Go with a tough Tacoma with 25 MPG and up to 2,000 cash back or choose APR financing from 0%. See your Toyota dealer today for big MPG and great deals during Toyota's model year closeout. Can I get a little help in here? Hello. Hey. We all upgraded to Verizon Wireless. Got pushed to talk and the reliability of the network. That old service is useless now. Ah! Careful, cement. Don't be the last one standing with another push to talk. Switch to the only one that comes with the network. Activate push to talk on five business lines to get this great deal, Verizon Wireless. Three things matter most to car buyers. Payment, gas, and trade-in. Berglund Kia of Lynchburg has it all. Payment. Brand new 08 Kia Rios. Zero down and just $199 a month. Gas. Five different Kias that get over 30 miles per gallon. Trade-in. Berglund Kia of Lynchburg wants your trade, even if you owe $8,000 more than it's worth. Plus, if you have a job bringing home $350 a week, your credit can be approved. Berglund Kia of Lynchburg has it all. Located at the River Ridge Mall. Call 800 new Kias. Spin it how you like. Nobody beats a Blackwell Kia deal. Nobody. Only ten four ninety five plus two thousand cash or trade for a new Kia Sportage with Kia's ten year one hundred thousand mile warranty. Nobody beats this Blackwell deal. Forecast backed by the AMS seal from the ABC thirteen weather experts. So let's talk now to my colleague, ABC News correspondent David Wright, who's been covering this presidential campaign from the beginning. David, there are always tricks you leave on the table in, in one of these debates, missed opportunities. You might have picked up a couple. Well, there were a couple tonight, I think. Uh, one was when John McCain challenged Barack Obama and said, how do you define a rich man? And you could almost hear Barack Obama begin to say, how about somebody with 11 houses? How about somebody with 13 cars? He didn't go he didn't. there. He didn't go he there. He left it on the table. He didn't go there. Uh, another missed opportunity Donna hinted at, which was this, the, the response to the subtext that McCain raised throughout the debate, which is that you need experience for this job. There's no room for on-the-job training. And the obvious comeback there is how then could you responsibly 
nominate Sarah Palin to be vice president. Who a lot of people are questioning her experience, although a lot of people support her as well. The elephant in the room, uh, as Jim Lehrer started out with, is the financial crisis. John McCain has had a very dramatic week on that. Uh, how, did the, how did that play here? I think that might have been a, a missed opportunity for him. He made such a stir about suspending his campaign uh, and, and all but uh, keeping everyone in suspense of, about whether he'd even show up here tonight. And then uh, these two candidates tonight it seemed to me we're virtually indistinguishable on that issue. Mm. So basically on the same page. And do you expect the next debate to be, well, maybe a little nastier? I mean, they, they, they seem to, to hold back almost from the direct engagement that people expect in these things. Obama, it seemed to me, as somebody who saw him watch some do 22 or so debates in the primaries, holds back as a matter of principle. That's not the kind of guy he is. McCain, I think, tried to strike out tonight in the best way he could, and maybe he needs to strike out even harder next time. And we may see more. David Wright, thanks very much for that. I know you'll be there as well. And next week, the vice presidential debate out in St. Louis. Thursday night at Washington University, Sarah Palin and Joe Biden. And that's our report for tonight. I'm Terry Moran. For Martin Bashir and Cynthia McFadden and all of us at ABC News, good night, America. Now, over the final 50 days leading up to this historic election, reaching Americans right where they live. Reporting from all 50 states, from every corner of this great land. Only ABC News with USA Today could make this historic American journey. ABC News, 50 states in 50 days is on.